Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and welcome to live lesson episode number... So I wanted to let you guys know that every second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be live streaming a lesson over at rockclass101.com. Now these live lessons are going to be hosted by Matt Dahlberg, and each month the topic will be different. So what's fun about the live lessons is that you're not only able to watch live, but you're also able to chat live. So you'll be able to chat with Matt and other Rock Class 101 members. So for more information on how to tune in, click this link right here or go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for live lessons. Now on that page, you'll also be able to watch every live lesson that we've done before. So if you've ever missed one, no worries, they're all there. Now, if you can't make the live stream, don't sweat it, because the day after the broadcast, we'll be publishing it to our YouTube channel. And to go one step further, on the first Monday of the month, which is one week before the broadcast, we're going to have a forum post up on the site, which will cover two things. Number one, what the topic for the month's live lesson will be about. And number two, you'll be able to post your questions ahead of time. So that's great news because you're still going to be able to participate. Now to post on our forum, all you have to do is sign up for basic membership, which is 100% free, and that will gain you the ability to post on our forums. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Matt to teach this month's lesson, and I hope you guys enjoy it. My name's Matt Dahlberg, and today we're going to be working on a really fun song. In fact, it's one of the first ones I ever learned. Uh, it's a song called Malaguena, um, and I learned it from my mom, who plays guitar. And my mom's not much of a, of a finger-picking guitarist. I mean, she does some finger-picking, but it's mostly strumming and picking to sing, because she's a children's music teacher. But this was a song that she always knew how to play, and she taught me how to play it on the guitar first. Now. I uh, couldn't actually play it on the guitar. I had a brief like two month stint playing guitar in my life and it did not go well. But this was one thing that trans, you know, translated to the uke really well. And so it's a lot of fun. So uh, before we start with this song today, we first need to learn the technique. And this technique is called the three finger tremolo. And the trick to it is we're going to be using these three fingers. We're going to be using our thumb, our index finger, and our middle finger to try to get a really cool tremolo-like effect. And tremolo means to play one note very quickly. So these two strings, index and middle fingers, are going to be stationed both on the A string of our ukulele. Now you'll notice as I do this, I'm going to put both strings perpendicular to the, the uh, string itself, both fingers to the string perpendicular. And I'm going to be right about over the sound hole of the ukulele here. You see how I'm not going up by the fretboard or going down by the bridge, but right about over the sound hole, both of those. The next step is taking our thumb, and to start we're going to place it on the G string, about a 45 degree angle to the string, making sure that the thumb is in front of those two fingers. That will help you keep a good form. It's normal for you to have a bit of a cock in your wrist when you're doing this. You'll notice that my wrist has a bend to it and it's a little uncomfortable at first. So if it's not super comfortable, that's actually a way that you know you're doing it mostly right. But anyways, we're going to then take this thumb, these two fingers, and we're going to practice making the one, two, three motion to start for the three finger tremolo. To start with this, let's play an A chord. So we'll take our middle finger, place it on the second fret of the G string, index finger, place it on the first fret of the C. And now all that we're going to do is we're going to pluck the G string by itself. And then we're going to use our middle finger to pull up on the A, and then our index to pull up on the A. So thumb on the G, and then middle on the A, and then index on the A. Thumb, index, middle, <laughs> index. Thumb, middle, index. All that I'm doing right now is playing on the G string with the thumb, and going with my middle, then my index, on the A string. Now what's cool about this technique, you might think, why are we going this way instead of with the index? And the reason is it allows your hand to kind of draw nicely. By having the longer finger go first, it allows your hand to kind of come up in a more, in a more seamless way. If you're going with the index and then having to pull the hand out to make room for the middle, it makes it much more awkward versus bringing it downward. It's kind of hard to explain why it works, but trust me, it makes it a lot easier when you're plucking that A string with the middle followed by the index. 
So that's the three finger tremolo in its simplest form. If I were to just practice that with the G and the A string and build up some speed, it might sound something like this. Now what's really important is that I'm drawing on the A string at a near perpendicular angle. It can be very tempting to have the fingers kind of start coming out like this, and you want to be careful of that because that won't give you as good of a tone. Really important to be right on that A. But that's only part of the technique because right now our thumb is only playing the G string. And really what it needs to be doing is playing over multiple strings. So what takes place with the three finger roll is that the thumb can play the G, the C, or the E string while the middle and index fingers are always doubling up on the A. So to play an A chord, like we just were, if I were to play the G string, and then an A, A, now maybe I'll use my thumb to play the C string, then the A twice, and then the E string followed by the A twice. So now I'm arpeggiating a chord essentially by playing the G string, then the A string twice, C string, A string twice, E, and then A twice. And as I do this, I'm doing a triplet field, meaning the distance between each and every one of the notes I pluck is exactly the same. So the distance between the G string and the A and the A to the C and the A and the A and the E to the A and the A is all the same. So this would be wrong. See how I'm delaying it, right? This is what we want to be playing. So what's cool about this is just with this A chord, playing the G, G, A, A, C, A, A, E, A, A, G, A, A, C, A, A, E, A, A. If you do that full rotation twice, you're already halfway done with the Malaguena tab that we have here, right? It's kind of cool. That's half the song. The other half is going to take place on a different chord. Now to actually talk about Malaguena, we're going to take a step away from the three finger roll just for a moment because we're going to look at the melody that's played with this tune. So to start here, we're going to fret our A chord and we're going to play the melody of Malaguena without the three finger roll so that we can hear what it sounds like. All that we're going to do is play our G, C, and E strings and not play the A strings at all. And we're going to do it all with our thumb because it's going to set up the tremolo later. To start here, we're going to play an A chord, play two on the G, then one on the E, then open on the E. Then we're going to do that again. Two on the G, one on the C, open on the E. Now for the second half of this tune, it's a little more tricky. We're going to switch to a B flat major seven chord. Sounds harder than it is. Ring finger here on the third fret of the G string, middle finger here on the second fret of the C string, index finger here on the first fret of the E string. Now. We're going to play the C string to start here with the thumb, then the E string. Now we're going to play the E string again, but we're going to take our index finger off. Then we're going to play the C string. That's still fretted, right? We only took the index finger off. So still fretted C. Then we take the C string off, leaving the ring finger still there on the G string, and then we play the G string. So that whole second half, let's break down again. Restart with the B flat chord. We're gonna play the C string fretted, E string fretted, take off the E and play it, C string fretted, take off the C and play it, and then the G string. Now let's go back to the first part with the A chord again. So let's fret the A, two, one, zero, zero. We're going to play G, C, E, G, C, E. Now we're going to do the B flat major seven chord, three, two, one. And then we're going to play the C, E, take the E off, C, take the C off, three on the G, and then we start back on the A. And when you listen to this, this is that theme for Malaguena, right? And this is what my mom first taught me many years ago. It's really fun to start building up the speed it's tricky because there's movement in it, right? It starts off with just playing the notes of the chord, but then it gets tricky how it starts in the middle of the chord, plays notes, takes off notes. But as you practice it, it eventually gets under your fingers and it's a ton of fun to play. So Malaguena without the three finger tremolo should sound something like this. Cool. 
right? Sounds fine. It's a, it's a fun tune, but that's not why we're here, right? What we're going to do now is we're going to add the three finger tremolo to this. Now, if you remember the three finger tremolo always goes thumb, middle, index with the middle and the index both on the A string. The Malaguena tune that we just played was all thumb, all on the G, C, and E strings. We never played the A string, not once. So what we can do is we can play the melody notes of Malaguena with our middle and index finger alternating on the A string between each melody note. So to start here, we're going to play that same A chord. I'm gonna play the G string, and now I'm going to play the A, A with my middle and index. Now, one thing that can help as you're getting this form is a technique that's called a pinky anchor. What that means is I'm going to actually take my pinky and I'm going to set it on the side of the ukulele here so that I can station my fingers on the, the, the instrument and get some perspective of where I am. Makes it so that I always know exactly what to play, right? So now what we're going to do with the Malaguena is we're going to layer that in, right? So two, one, zero, zero. We're gonna play the two on the G with the thumb. Now middle finger on the A, index on the A, then the thumb on the C, A, A, E, A, A, A G, A, A, C, A, A, E, A, A. So that's the first half on that A chord, just like this. Only now we have the two A strings struck between each one of those melody notes. So to play Malaguena at this speed, you would have to be doing this. Crazy wicked fast, right? Like really, really fast. And that's what makes the song fun, but also really scary at first. Because you have to play it so fast for it, sound to, like, for it to sound like the tune, but it's okay to practice it slow. Make sure that each one of those motions is consistent. What's cool is this tune really picks up speed fast as you get comfortable with the techniques. So let's go and try just that first half again. So we're gonna fret the A chord. G, A, A, C, A, A, E, A, A, G, A, A, C, A, A, E, A, A. Now I just played it slow and it was still quite fast, wasn't it? I mean, let's, let's be real, that was still fast if you've never done this before. So the first thing to do is just build up that speed and get really comfortable with that thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, always doing that again and again and again to build up that speed. Now as we go to the second half of the melody, again, it's a little bit more tricky of a melody part, but the concept's the same. We're gonna play our B flat major seven chord. We're gonna play the C string, and then the A string twice, then the E string, A string twice, open E, A string twice, C, A string twice, open C, A string twice, G, A string twice. So that second half, super, super slow, sounds something like this. Go back to the first part. Now I'm gonna play the whole thing really, really slow, just so that you can hear and see how this technique goes. And I'm gonna gradually increase the speed. I think I'll play it three times. Really slow, pretty slow, and not slow, <laughs> so that you can hear what this sounds like. So here we go, really slow. Pretty cool, right? Again, it's a real finger twister, you know, like uh, she sells seashells by the seashore, but for your fingers. It really is challenging at first, but as you build up that speed, it's really, really fun, really entertaining. It also sounds best with a low G ukulele. You'll notice my high G's on the wall over there, which you're probably more familiar with if you've seen any of my videos. I'm usually a high G player. This is one of those songs though that just sounds richer with the low G, more like that classical guitar type of sound. 
And so that's the three finger tremolo with Malaguena to play on it. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, just try to pick out that melody that we worked on earlier to start. Don't worry about putting the tremolo in right away. Just get that comfortable because it should all be with the thumb and then you can put in those two fingers going over it. If you want something for an in-between, another trick that you can do is only use the middle finger on the A string and not double it up. So instead of going G, A, A with the middle and index, if that's too challenging, you can actually just go G, A and then go through the whole motion. And that's just one finger on the A string. And that makes it a little bit more approachable, but still sounds cool. And that's actually the way my mom first taught it to me is just playing it every other. But the three finger tremolo really adds something to it. So have fun with it. It's a lot of fun to play and uh, quite challenging, but it's a, it's a good one. It's, a, it's tons of fun and it's the thing I've been playing for the longest. I think I've been playing this for over half my life now. So it's a, it's a fun tune. So I've got a few questions uh, that I saw on rock class or at least one which I'll be answering. And then here at the chat, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them uh, in the uh, chat comments. Um, but the first question from rock class 101 was uh, from Becky7777. Um, and uh, and she asks, tips to keep the three fingers tremoloing on a four finger roll from getting tense or sore from l really long or demanding songs with tremolo would be great. So uh, what she's asking about, I think, is essentially instead of doing just two fingers, doing three fingers on the tremolo. And all that that would be is now using the ring followed by the middle followed by the index. And so the, the first thing is make sure that if you're doing these tremolo techniques that you're always going from the out of the hand to the in. It makes a lot more sense to go ring, middle, index, ring, middle, index to me and the way that I've been playing it. But generally speaking, the forefinger with this, which I haven't done in a while, but I think should, yeah, something like that. It's a little sloppy. You'll see that I'm not very good at it because honestly, I find that the three finger method does everything I want it to for the sound of the tremolo. When you build up the speed, you'll get that nice tremolo with just those two fingers. And so if, you're, if your hand is cramping, try to keep your fingers nice and loose as you're doing it. If you're getting everything so rigid, it's really going to kind of hurt your hand. So keep everything very loose as you're practicing, no matter which technique it is that you're working on. So, uh, Becky, uh, oh, it's uh, uh, Becky said in the YouTube, can I get your opinion on the forum? What's going on in a video? And yes, it's uh, for stupidly hard songs. I'm sure, yeah. If you want to, um, um, if you want to leave a a, a a post here on the lesson of what what that question is, I'll, I'd be happy to. Uh, let's see the other questions that were there with um, with the Rock Class 101 forum. Looks like. Um, oh, it's it's uh, somebody just saying, I probably need to grow my nails to play flamenco. I just realized that will make playing the piano harder. Yeah, so one of the funny things about the ukulele um, and this style is nails can really help uh, with getting a good tone. You'll notice that I do have a little bit of nails. Let's see, where's my camera? My camera's right there. Oh, it's gonna be a little too dark. I can't quite, let's see if I get enough light in here. My nails aren't super long, um, but they are longer than the average, you know, <laughs> dude's nails. Um, they don't come over super far. My thumbnail looks about like that. But I do have enough nail that I'm able to kind of catch the strings with a little bit more prominence and that contributes to that more aggressive flamenco sound. And it's also going to impact the sound when you're trying to do those rasciato rolls and stuff, which I think may be in a, in a future live lesson here on Rock Class, we'll see. Um, and so yeah, longer nails can certainly help with this, but it's not a requirement. You don't need to have the long nails to still get a good tone. There are lots of players that do really well without, without having the longer nails. So, so um, any other questions? I'm gonna look through the, the chat real quick here. Um, uh, Connie says, hi, hello Connie. I think you've been at every live lesson. Thank you for the support and making it out to these. RB Ukulele Vid says, good morning. Good morning to you too, except it's 4 p.m. where I am and uh, the, the end of the workday, but good morning. Uh, glad that you're able to make it. 
Um, RB Ukulele Vids also says, I'd love, love to learn this full piece sometime. Yeah, and honestly, I would too, which sounds kind of funny, but uh, Malaguena is usually this thing that I sort of play the, the themes off of, right? Where you can get that, that, we just learn and then put some strumming in there, you know, in different ways. But I don't really know how the whole tune goes. I usually use it as a as an intro to Jake Shimabukuro's Let's Dance, um, which is one of my favorite songs to play on the uke. And this Malaguena stuff just sounds so good to introduce it. So pretty cool. Uh, Becky said it's so fast. Uh, it, Robin, yeah, it's really a fast technique when you're working on it. So as you're practicing, do it nice and slow and methodically as you're going through. And eventually you'll build up more speed. It is a tricky technique, but it's so much fun when you work on it. So let me just check real quick again on the forum to see if there are any questions. Um, and again, if you have any questions in the chat, please leave them down below. Um, really, it can be a question about anything um, ukulele related. Uh, and yeah, so let's see. It doesn't look like there are any others um, in the rock class forums. This went by quick. And I don't see any chats on YouTube, but let me make sure I am on live chat. So one thing that I wanna talk about with the, the technique real quick is slow, consistent practice is the key to getting the song really comfortable. So when you first are getting it, make sure that you're counting those threes, one, two, three, where you're doing the thumb, middle, index. And as so long as those are consistent and you're always going, Notice how there's no delays between anything, right? It's very tempting to have a delay before a chord change, especially when you're coming off the first part. A lot of times I'll teach the song to people and they'll do this, they'll go. <laughs> right? And you wanna make sure that you're setting up whatever comes next. So I like to use the open A time when I'm plucking to actually think about the next movement. So when I'm going from the A chord, and I play that open A the twice, I might actually take off my hand and get ready for that B flat chord. And as I'm going through this, you'll see that I actually will sometimes move the hand at the tail end of that open A string motion so that I'm all ready to go. So that's something that can really help expedite it if you're having trouble with getting consistency on those chords. But there you have it, that's Malaguena, at least part one of it, using the three finger tremolo technique, which is one of my favorites on the uke. Just as a reminder, try to keep those fingers perpendicular to the strings, right over the sound hole. Thumb is more at a 45 degree angle in front of the other two fingers. As long as you're doing that, it's going to look good and sound good. In fact, one thing I recommend is take a video of yourself playing and watch it back and see if it looks comfortable, if you look kind of mangled because the sound will be reflective of whatever you are uh, looking like. It's pretty, pretty amazing. You never really see someone look uncomfortable and sound great, right? So, cool. Uh, RB Ukulele Vid says, I think this is similar to the technique on the open G string when playing Blackbird on the guitar. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually familiar with the technique on uh, Blackbird on guitar, but um, I, it very well might be, you know, these sort of techniques uh, transcend genres, right? So I'll have to go check that out um, to, to see because love that tune. So awesome. Well, if there are no other questions, I'll let you guys go. Uh, thank you so much for attending this week, this month's live lesson here on Rock Class 101. For more, be sure to check out the website and the forums. I'll be lurking on the forums if you guys have any questions that you'd like to be answered, uh, such as Becky's question. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys very soon. In fact, next month, the second Monday of every month, we do this live lesson and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in November. So hope you guys have had a great start to your fall. I know I have, my son's got his uh, Halloween costume all picked out and we're really excited to go uh, trick or treating. So, well, thank you so much guys. Have a good night and I'll talk to you soon. Take it easy.